Obesity levels worldwide have more than doubled in the last 30 years, claiming more than 3 million lives every year. While British experts state that by 2050, obesity will cost us £50 billion a year, crippling the NHS. The epidemic has already brought one small town in the American Southwest to its knees. McAllen, Texas, has the highest rate of obesity in the USA, and the consequences have been shattering. Where America leads, Britain so often follows. So I'm here to investigate how obesity impacts on all aspects of life, from birth right through to death, because it's a possible future for us back in the UK if we don't change our ways. We're getting younger individuals who are more morbidly obese, dying unexpectedly. We have to inform the family that we have measured from elbow to elbow on the body and it will not fit in a normal casket. And your other leg, there's not much left of that one, is there? No, they cut off all the dough. He's taking the lessons of McAllen back to the feeding clinic for some of the most extreme diet swaps ever. Even the smell of it is kind of making me feel a bit crazy, to be honest. I can't believe I've only got a kiwi. <laughs> Come on, really? The consequences of that in this person, it was death. <laughs> We'll be getting an insider's view into the world of eating disorders through the eyes of recovering anorexic and journalist Emma Wolfe. And it's not that I don't like food, I love food, but I got addicted to starvation. Emma will meet sufferers and practitioners reporting on a world she knows all too well. I took about a thousand laxatives between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. As she unearths the latest groundbreaking research. If you scan the brains of people with anorexia nervosa, you find this abnormality. Welcome back to Super Size versus Super Skinny. As a nation, we're getting fatter. Over one in four of us in the UK is obese. In America, that figure is much, much worse. In the USA, nearly 78 million adults are obese. That's a third of the population. Dr. Christian's headed stateside to investigate America's new fattest town for a stark glimpse of our potential future here in the UK if we don't mend our ways. The city of McAllen is America's worst offender when it comes to obesity rates, with nearly 39% of the population having a BMI of over 30. And I'm about to meet someone who, on a daily basis, sees the devastation that this epidemic is causing in all its gory detail. Dr Norma Jean Farley is McAllen's forensic pathologist. Carrying out hundreds of autopsies at the city morgue, Dr Farley has seen close up just what a devastating impact obesity can have on the body. What? percentage of all the bodies that you do an autopsy on would you say are obese? Just obese? Probably 40 to 50 percent are obese. That's quite shocking. We're getting younger individuals who are more morbidly obese really? dying unexpectedly and that's when we start noticing that there may be a, a change or a trend. Obesity is now such a problem in McAllen Dr Farley is having to move premises. McAllen residents have now got so fat they're having to supersize their morgue. It will need bigger fridges, wider doorways, and autopsy tables that can cope with the weight of McAllen's deceased. It's called a bariatric table, yeah. but it's really just a table that will accommodate someone who is larger. Um, it's about 42 inches across, where our normal autopsy table is somewhere between 31 to 32 inches across. And what's the problem with, with, with trying to do an autopsy of a very large person on this table? Just because, I suppose, bits fall over the side, do they? They'll hang over the sides even before we open uh, the individual. In fact, with a table like that, I'd have to use two tables, tie them together to keep them on the table. Oh, really? Which is no good at all, is it? No. And this table is actually getting more popular in the United States, not just in Texas, but in other places. I think what we're seeing is now, with our population, maybe the norm is really overweight to obese. Dr. Farley wants to show Dr. Christian how fat became a major killer in this town. This person's internal organs have been squashed by their body fat. You can see these are lungs right here, the right lung and the left lung. You can see that all these organs that would be in your chest are actually being smushed. They're being pushed up into a small little cavity 
because of all this fat. It's incredible. The, the lungs are completely squashed. There's no capacity to those. So this person would have found any sort of movement, breathing in general, very, very hard work. Morbid obesity resulted in this male's red weeping rash, caused by folds of fat irritating the skin. Now that's the sort of thing you usually see in a baby, isn't it? Yes, it is. So this is some kind of an infection, usually fungal infections do this. You can see how painful that would be. Can't It'd be you? very painful, and it, and it was actually weeping. This next patient died in his 30s. Complications due to obesity caused a buildup of fluid in his legs. And sometimes, you know, I've seen it and it, it, it oozes. It just sort of weeps constantly all the time. And all of these people were here because they died of complications of obesity or what? That's correct. It was. I can't think of a more graphic representation of the devastation that obesity causes in the body. And more shocking still is the fact that the bodies in Dr. Farley's morgue are getting younger and younger. People who, with treatment or with lifestyle changes, could still be alive. Back in the UK, Dr. Christian wants to make sure that our eating habits aren't sending us to an early grave. He's brought together eight super sizers and eight super skinnies, whose terrible diets are at opposite ends of the scale. I've brought together 16 people with some truly terrible eating habits. By pairing them up and making them swap diets in my feeding clinic, I'm hoping they'll start to understand the vital changes that they need to make to turn their lives around. LJ, come and join me. So, LJ, I'm going to pair you up with... with Katie. Hey. Wow. <laughs> that is pretty shocking. I can, get, oh, I can get all around. <laughs> you can't do that to me. I can't with two hands. Oh. I'm going to be kind of poking you in the face, going, there's a chocolate bar, come on, eat it, eat it. Like, I could snap her into two. She must not eat, like, literally anything. So, yeah, I'm a little bit scared that I'm going to be kind of given air and dust. I have three meals a day. Don't think they're going to be quite the size that he eats. <laughs> Katie is an incredibly fussy eater and survives on childlike portions, whereas LJ eats too many portions and it's usually greasy Chinese takeaway. I'm hoping that they'll work together to overcome these bad eating habits. 24-year-old LJ Marley works in a Chinese takeaway, and you'll never guess what his favourite food is. Yep, Chinese takeaway. Tipping the scales at 24 stone 4 pounds, LJ simply loves to eat, and the result is a 59-inch waist. It tastes good, it feels good. But like, yes, this is lush. The biggest part of LJ's life when it comes to food is lots and lots of takeaways. Ah, thank you very much. I get to work and the first thing I have is boiled rice and curry sauce. And chips, followed by snacks and even more Chinese. So I can go back and back and back and there's no one kind of sat there really judging me. You know, I can do it as much and as often as I like. Good evening, When the call comes in for a delivery and they give me the address and they're like, oh, it's flat 43 and it's instantly, oh my God, flats. And I'm thinking, for Christ's sake, I've got to go up those stairs. Thank you very much. <sighs> I am knackered. Then I would take a meal home and I'd probably already eaten two, three meals at work. Oh, go on, pass me chicken ball. Even after meal number five, it's hard to resist the secret snack cupboard. So, like, mm, so what have we got this evening? Yeah, I'll have that one. I'll have, mm, I'll have that one as well. You know, I kind of wake up in the morning, look down, I was like, Christ, that's a lot. Out of breath walks with pet dog Dolly are worrying LJ further. You know, I'm almost 25 stone. That's not right. But I worry for the fact that I'm going to be one day walking with my dog and I'm going to collapse having a heart attack. Yeah, it upsets me to think what sort of pain I would probably put my family through. It's very selfish to think that I'm doing this to myself, potentially one day drop down with some form of health problems, all because I'm fat. Whilst LJ's dependency on takeaway has caused his weight to balloon, the opposite is true of our super skinny. I'm trapped like a 12-year-old's body. 
It makes me feel horrible. I feel like I'm not a woman. In Morecambe, Lancashire, 26-year-old mum of two, Katie Reeve, has something in common with her kids. Do it again! Her childlike portions. As a busy mum, Katie claims to have no time to eat. Her limited kid-sized daily diet begins with two slices of toast. Lunch is a takeaway burger, whilst dinner is a poultry slice of pizza. But surviving on just 1,500 calories a day is definitely taking its toll. I hate being this skinny. I sort of look at myself in the mirror and think it's disgusting, it's absolutely hideous, and it's not normal. My energy levels are quite low, and I'm assuming that's down to my weight. The only time Katie managed to put on weight in the past was when she was pregnant. The heaviest I weighed was seven and a half stone, and that was literally the day before I gave birth. The second my kids were born, the weight went within minutes. And it's not just Katie who's increasingly concerned about her weight. <laughs> just the usual. Her weight has put a lot of strain onto our relationship. It's been getting Katie down for many years. Oh, I'm very paranoid that people are looking at me and judging me on my weight. Is everybody hungry? Yeah. Although Katie ensures the rest of her family are well fed, she clearly needs a helping hand when it comes to putting on weight herself. I think my weight's a big issue, and once I get that sorted, hopefully I'll be a happier person. It looks like fussy Katie will have her work cut out if she wants to put on any weight. But before Super Size and Super Skinny enter the feeding clinic, Dr Christian is giving LJ a Super Size kick start. He's sending him to America for a terrifying glimpse of his possible future if his dire diet continues. I'm feeling pretty apprehensive with the thought of meeting someone that's bigger than me. But yeah, that's a little bit scary. <laughs> Oh, get that black. <laughs> 24 stone takeaway delivery driver LJ Marley has arrived in Oklahoma to get a glimpse of where he's heading if he doesn't change his terrible takeaway habit. He's en route to meet Becky Wiseman, who at over 40 stone has let her takeaway habit take over her body. Becky's bulk makes it impossible for her to look after herself, and daughter in law Stephanie has moved in to become her full time carer. Once you reach a certain mobility level, you're up a creek. A lifetime of comfort eating has left Becky with serious health problems. She has to wear an oxygen mask to help her breathe and takes a cocktail of drugs to battle diabetes, thyroid problems and congestive heart failure. She could die in her sleep because of the weight around her heart. And that, that is my biggest fear. Even the simplest things are a major struggle. If I have to pee, I just pee. But if I have to potty potty, I call Stephanie in and say, it's time to wipe. It's killing her spirit more than it's killing her body. And I guess that's something I'm afraid of too, that she'll get tired of fighting and just give up. But does LJ realize exactly what's in store if he carries on with his extreme diet? I'm hoping this person's going to give me that little extra bit of determination to really do something about myself. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Really warm. Supposed to be on oxygen all the time because it's hard to breathe because of this hot air and stuff because of my weight okay. and stuff. How do you find that? It's, it's hard. It's really hard, you know, so that's why I'm trying to lose weight. It's easy putting it on, yeah. but you have a hard time getting it off, you know. I certainly didn't expect to meet someone quite as big as Becky. LJ is about to find out what it means to try and keep clean when you weigh nearly 600 pounds. I do this about once a week. Oh, lovely. <laughs> She has to come outside to be hosed down. It's like, almost like she's being treated like an animal. Okay. And what I do, since I can't reach down here, she usually uses the wash rag uh -huh. and washes my legs and stuff. It gets really dirty underneath there. And then she goes down in between my toes. That's where it tickles. <laughs> <laughs> 
how do you feel about having Stephanie do it for you? I'd rather have to be able to do it myself, but you know, when you have this in your way, you know, it's kind of hard to bend over to do it. Do you ever worry that you'll, that you may ever get to a stage where you won't be able to do all of it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to get that far. Becky is desperately trying to take control of her weight. She's now on a calorie-controlled diet in the hope that she'll be considered for potentially life-saving weight loss surgery. Make sure that thing don't move. Today is weigh-in day. Becky is now so large she needs to be weighed using specialist scales. One, two, three. Oi. But physically getting out of the house is half the battle. Also in Oklahoma is Dr. Christian. He wants to check that the shock treatment he's prescribed for LJ is having an effect. LJ has a number of parallels with Becky. They both use food to comfort eat. Unfortunately, Becky, it's now got a stage where she's going to have to make drastic measures in order to change her lifestyle around. I know she's trying to diet at the moment and lose weight with the hope of getting bariatric surgery in the future. As Becky and LJ arrive at the nursing center, LJ's unaware he has a surprise visitor. Aha, uh -huh. LJ. Oh my God. How are you? <laughs> and you must be Becky. Yes. Becky, I'm Christian. Oh, nice to meet you. The doctor who's going to be looking after this young man. Oh. Becky is hoping she will have lost 10 pounds to weigh in today at 545 pounds. Okay. All right, let me center here. What's it read? Oh no, don't tell me. 559. Oh, God, that's water. Don't worry. What were you hoping for? Tell me. <laughs> you no. Know hmm? Oh, but don't cry. I was hoping another 10 pounds at least. God, it hurts. It hurts. It really does. Back at Becky's, and Dr. Christian wants LJ to see how extreme obesity is having a devastating impact on Becky's health. At over 40 stone, she's already suffering from high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and congestive heart failure. You reach a certain point where things actually just get harder and harder. So Becky's reached a point where her joints ache, but we need to get her moving. She can't breathe properly, but we need to get her moving. But all these things are stopping us being able to get her moving. I think medically for you, bariatric surgery, weight loss surgery is going to be your best yeah. bet. If I can get that bariatric surgery and I can get something done, boy, I'm going to be uh, moving like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Time for Dr. Christian to find out if LJ's supersized wake-up call has hit home. So how have you found it all here in America? It's been a great lesson, and it's also been a bit of a shock as well. That was something I hoped it would be. I think you'll find Becky's in such an advanced state of ill health, and most of her problems, if not all of her problems, are related to weight. I can't imagine the, you know, the embarrassment she must feel, and it, it was genuinely upsetting. I'm going to leave you with Becky to say your goodbyes and things, and I'm going to cool. see you back in London. Cool. Okay. Thank right. you very Good much. Luck with it all. See you. Bye bye. Hello. You all right? I'm fine. I'm going to make a move now, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> it kind of puts things into perspective that I need to change my life and I need to do something about my health. Otherwise, I'm going to be, you know, just, just like Becky. It's time for LJ to head home, where the hard work will begin. Don't cry, because you'll make me cry. We'll see you later. Take care of yourself, OK? Thank you. You take care of yourself. Okay. See you soon. OK. Bye. Bye-bye. Back in the UK, will the shock of meeting 40 Stone Becky be the catalyst LJ needs to change his ways? And will Katie rediscover her appetite? Dr Christian has asked our super sizer and super skinny to join him in the feeding clinic for an intense two days where they'll swap their terrible diets. Weighing in at six stone nine pounds, tiny mum of two, Katie, lives on a diet of little bits of stodge. Her child-sized portions and limited food choices means she under-eats by over 500 calories a day. 
I want to talk to you a little bit about your food. You are very, 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 very tame when it comes to trying new foods, aren't you? Yes. You eat like a mouse. See, I didn't think my quantities were that bad either. I thought it was quite a normal, average-sized portion. If you get sick, which actually is not an unreal possibility, looking at your nutritional intake, who's going to look after your kids then? That's me. And who's going to be happy about, you know, not being able to look after your kids? You're not, are you? No. Yeah, I didn't think my diet was that bad. I just thought it was normal, it was average. See, I'm really shocked. <laughs> Whilst finicky Katie needs to take more time to eat, LJ has no such problem. He weighs over three times as much as Katie. At 24 stone 4 pounds, he's 12 stone 7 pounds overweight, putting him at an increased risk of stroke, heart disease and diabetes. Your current calorie intake is pretty much enough for two grown men. You're eating for two. Wow. The rate you're currently eating, you will continue to put on weight, all right? It's time for Super Size and Super Skinny to swap diets. The first meal is breakfast, which for stuck in a rut Katie is always two slices of toast and a cup of tea. LJ's breakfast is mammoth, with two eggs, four slices of bacon, two sausages, three hash browns, beans, fried mushrooms, tomato sauce, two slices of toast, two slices of bread and butter, a pint of squash and a cup of tea. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's mental. Oh, bless you. Mm, fantastic. Oh, it's like a lot bigger than what I do. So do you think you'd eat more if someone else cooked it for you? Definitely, it's all convenience. It's having the time and the energy to actually do it all because like, my energy levels are so low, I'm running after the kids all day. Do you know, eating something like that would give you the energy you need to, to kind of get your day going. Katie is kind of hiding behind the fact that she has children and, you know, she's busy and and stuff, which, yeah, that's fine, totally get that. Um, I kind of think that's a bit too much of an excuse. Even though she's faced with a huge plate of food, Katie gamely tries to work her way through LJ's massive breakfast and doesn't do too badly at all. This is small. This is like... Uh, a children's portion. <laughs> <laughs> at first it was like, oh, my God, wow. And now it's like, oh, I'm ever going to get to the end of it. As I, d I don't want this to sound mean, but I'm starting to get annoyed that you're leaving <laughs> bread and you're leaving tomato sauce. Kind of got to open your eyes a bit. This is big. I've not done that bad, though. Yeah, that's pretty pathetic, to be quite honest. So. And if LJ's breakfast wasn't bad enough, this supersizer has a supersized takeaway habit. Dr Christian has arranged a cooking lesson with a twist to show LJ just how unhealthy his Chinese meals are. LJ, welcome to my all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. My God. Not just all you can eat, but all you do eat. Because this is what you get through in just a week. <laughs> Shut up. Are you serious? I'm very serious. Wow. Put it in. Wow. In just one week, LJ will eat 12 takeaways. That's nine cartons of rice, 10 portions of chicken. You have plenty of sauces on there. And four bags of prawn crackers. This is only Chinese takeaway. You have an awful lot of other foods on top of this as well. Yeah, that's pretty sickening. <laughs> What's most concerning for me is that you have no idea of what's in it. But don't worry, because today is your lucky day, because I've worked that out for you. Okay. Great. Within one year, LJ will consume over 27 litres of oil from his Chinese meals alone. Even the smell of it is kind of making me feel a bit queasy, to be honest. His takeaway addiction means he eats over 5.7 kilograms of salt a year, nearly two and a half times the recommended amount. I have loads of salt on my normal food at home anyway, and, yeah, that's... I should stop it altogether, clearly. Dr Christian wants to show LJ the damage too much salt can cause. What have we got here? A brain. This is the brain of someone who has died because of a brain injury. 
Okay. It's what we call a cerebrovascular accident or a stroke. Can you see this part here? This is an area of brain that has died because of a blood clot. My granddad has had strokes and he just had one recently. Sorry, I'm getting upset because that's, um, right. that's like... High salt diet is a risk factor for developing high blood pressure. And one of the consequences of having high blood pressure is stroke. There is a family history of this already. So I want you to be very, very, very aware that this is a real risk for you. So all I'm asking you to do actually is to make the right choices. I never ever linked my eating to, to having a stroke, never in a million years. And to know that what I'm doing currently can have such a drastic result as to having a takeaway. It's Yeah, it's upsetting. It's upsetting. <laughs> In the feeding clinic, it's time for lunch. Fussy Katie gave LJ's monster breakfast a good go, and it's time for round two. Curry sauce, rice, chips, and prawn crackers. I can't believe how much you're eating. Oh, my God, it's going to get covered in curry sauce. <laughs> I hate curry sauce. as well. No way. Oh, my God, this is, like, the worst meal you could ever give me. And LJ served with another tiny bread-based meal. This time, it's a toasty. So what's what's in this? Ham and cheese. Just ham and cheese? Yeah. Nothing else? No tomato? I'll happily swap back with you. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to be sick. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> That's gross. Try not to... I'd say try not to think about the taste, but obviously it's in your gob, so <laughs> you've got no choice really, have you? <clears throat> not really. <laughs> That's disgusting. Weighing in at six stone 12 pounds, busy mum Katie needs to take time out to look after herself, but she's not finding it easy. I kind of feel a bit selfish. It's like... It's bad that I'm kind of doing something that's just for me. You're just doing something quite naturally for yourself, and by doing that for yourself, you're being a better mum. I want you to make me a promise that you're not going to say that <laughs> sentence, it's for my babies, it's for you. It's still going to be about my kids. No, 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 no. It's always we, about We stop babies. it here now. <laughs> right, so let's, let's make a promise, yeah? Okay. You look, put foot down, we'll shake on it. Just you. Just for me. Just you, yeah? Life-changing for me. If only Katie's newfound determination extended to lunch as well. I'm sorry, LJ, but you're going to shout me because compared to breakfast, I've done a pitiful attempt. Wow. I tried the curry. At least I tried it. Um, but, yeah, I'm not a fan. I kind of feel she let herself down by not really getting into it. Katie is not trying hard enough. She must push herself to try new foods and new flavours. She has to get over her fear of the unknown if she's ever going to succeed. Next up is dinner, and while 24-stone takeaway binger LJ seems happy with a child-sized portion of lasagna... Oh, I can feel my tummy go... Mmm! Picky Katie is not thrilled with her plate of chocolate. I'm dreading tomorrow. I'm praying no more curry, no more spices and no more chocolate. <laughs> but today isn't over yet. LJ eats takeaway whenever he likes, sometimes through the night. So Katie is left to eat yet another takeaway feast of chicken balls, chilli chicken, egg fried rice and a pint of cola. Uh, LJ, you ain't serious. Oh, but he is. These chicken ribs are actually quite nice. OK. Good. Tastes better during the day. <laughs> I can't believe LJ gave me a takeaway in the middle of the night. I love my sleep far too much and I weren't impressed. LJ's eating habits may be giving Katie cause for concern. For those suffering from an eating disorder, every meal is a struggle. Eating disorders devastate lives. They have the highest mortality of all mental illnesses. 20% of sufferers will die, either from medical complications or from suicide. My name is Emma Wolf. I'm 34 years old and I'm recovering from anorexia. Emma is one of the 1.6 million people in the UK affected by an eating disorder. 
she's written a book about her experience of living with anorexia and also writes a weekly column on the subject. Every Tuesday when the column comes out, I probably get about 50 emails, and that's it's quite upsetting for me. Emma suffered from anorexia for over 10 years, but at the age of 34, she's now in recovery. By sharing her own story, she wants to inspire others on how and where to seek help. I know only too well the devastation that eating disorders can bring. As a journalist, I want to take a look inside this world and find out what's really going on. And I think having been through it myself, it kind of gives me a license to ask some of the questions that other people might not think to ask. Across the series, Emma will be meeting men and women who share their own personal experience of the shocking reality of life with an eating disorder. Emma begins with her own story. I'm one of five children. Personally, I was, I think, very outgoing, very sociable, loved my food, loved eating, enjoyed all the childhood treats and parties and things like that, birthday cake and all of the normal foods that people eat. In my teens, I never really had an issue with body weight or shape. And I think I was confident. I felt, I felt attractive. I had lots of boyfriends and lots of good friends and stuff like that. So for me, really, eating problems didn't come about until I was 19. I'd just come back from spending a year in New York. It was my gap year between school and university, where I'd been very, very happy um, with a boyfriend out there. And our relationship ended. He, he ended it. And that was where it all began. That was my, my first year at Oxford University. And I basically stopped eating. And it wasn't to do with wanting to look a certain way or anything like that. Um, it was just about, it was about punishing myself. It was about not being good enough and not being good enough for him. And so I stopped being good enough for myself, I think. Through her university life, Emma starved herself, sometimes surviving off only an apple a day. Oxford brings everything back in a quite intense way because when I arrived here, I was nine and a half stone. And when I left, I was five and a half stone. So I basically lost nearly half of my body weight in these three years. And I lost some of my mind as well. It's really hard to explain how it happened but it tapped into something in my brain that worked. And it's not that I don't like food, I love food, I love eating I, like anyone else, but I got addicted to starvation. It's, it's that internal warfare which I think is at the heart of anorexia. It's somehow you've waged war on yourself and you get locked into this very, very strange, desperate, fight against all the things that a body needs. After years of battling against her eating disorder and with the support of a therapist, Emma is now in recovery. For me, um, enough was enough. When I turned 30, I had started to face some home truths. I was wrecking every relationship I had by keeping on with anorexia. And so meeting the right man, wanting to have a family, it was a turning point. And what I've learned is that I'm the only one that can do it for me. I've got all the support in the world, but I needed to start eating. Nowadays, about a year into recovery, it's not a daily battle anymore. If my boyfriend's cooking me a lovely meal, I don't skip lunch because he's cooking me a special meal. I look forward to it and I've put on almost a stone and that is the sign of recovery. <laughs> It's day two in the feeding clinic and time for breakfast. While Katie sits down to a panini with cheese and ham and a pint of cola, LJ yet again faces two slices of toast and a cup of tea. This is boring. This is, you know, I, I, I don't do boring food. But, well, look, I'll tell you what, if I get a cheese toasty for lunch, I'm going to be livid with you. Absolutely furious. About as angry as I'm going to get if I get curry sauce again. Oh dear. I'll be back, I've got more for you. It's lunchtime, but it feels like Groundhog Day. No. This is gross. Yep, it's mm, more it's curry so sauce with me. boiled rice, fried chicken oh, balls, barbecue oh. sauce, prawn crackers, a liberal sprinkling of salt, oh, and a pint of flavoured water. Oh, it's so not funny. LJ isn't best pleased with his meal either. 
Oh, another toasty, but this time it didn't have no cheese in it. It was just ham. You need to try it. You need, this is about progressing. Oh At least trying it. I want to cry. <laughs> it tastes <laughs> horrible. Well, this isn't very satisfying either, to be quite honest. You know. Oh, I can't eat anymore. I'm really sick. That is seriously gross. Really? I'm sorry. No, no, you can keep that. I'll starve. Mm, OK. Do you give up before you even, yeah. even started eating it? You give up? Basically. Suddenly, it's all too much. That's it, lunch over. take five minutes, go upstairs. Take five okay. minutes. That's not even trying. That's not even trying. Not even trying. I'm really annoyed. Annoyed with myself. I don't know, I was just annoyed with the whole the way it all went. Just kind of annoyed with, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have handled it quite as strappy as I did. I think we need a cuddle and a hug and chill out a bit with each other. Hello. Hey, honey. I'm sorry. It's mm. You're fine, honestly. It's the last meal in the feeding clinic, and at over 24 stone, overeater LJ seems to have turned a corner in his attitude towards food. He's happy with his smaller portion of sausage casserole and mash. But will undereater Katie give her takeaway meal of special fried rice, chicken skewers, barbecue sauce, and cereal bar a try? <laughs> this makes me really excited. That sounds so sad. Finally. Are we going to try this sauce then? Let's have a go. Come on, let's see it. Okay. Amazingly, Katie digs deep and really gives her final takeaway a good go. It's not great, but it's not spicy, which is a bonus. Wouldn't have normally tried the, uh, the spicy bit, but no, I've had a go and I've tried them. And LJ has surprised himself too. This is it. <laughs> this last food bar. Do you know what? I actually feel relatively full. Mm -mm -mm. I'm pleased I've got to this stage. So, you know, I'm, I'm pleased I'm feeling fuller and I actually feel better about myself, so... That's good. Right, I think I've eaten everything that's not spicy. Main thing is, though, is you tried it. So, well done on trying it. You, you gave it a go and you didn't whinge about it. So LJ is feeling full and Katie has tried everything put in front of her. Not bad for a child sized portion picker. That's to our diet swap in the house. Absolutely. It's time for our duo to check out of the feeding clinic, but before they go, Dr Christian wants to give them their eating plans. So, gang, we've come to the end of the diet swap and it is now time to send you off on your ways. LJ, I have your personalised diet plan there and one for you, Katie. And a final bit of advice for you, really, would be that small changes add up over time to make a big difference. Don't try too much too quickly because that's when you start to stumble and fall, all right? It is easier than you think and I wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, I kind of feel like I've accomplished something. I've broken a habit. Takeaways is going to be the thing of the past as of today. Big, big, big no-no from now on. And I'm really looking forward to kind of starting a new future. Looking forward to getting home. It's uh, good to now finally feel like I can be me, not me as just mum, basically. So, yeah, kind of looking forward to going back, trying all the new foods and getting a happier, healthier me. LJ! <laughs> oh, good luck. No more takeaways and I can't wait to see how your progress is. You, you know, break the bad habits and be yourself, you know, do this for yourself. This is the most important thing, yeah? Good luck. Definitely, good luck. It's been nearly two months since takeaway addict LJ and fussy mum Katie left the feeding clinic. And it's time to see if they've managed to heed Dr Christian's advice. I'm quite nervous about getting on the scales today, to be honest, but really hoping I'm going to get the results that I'm looking for. 
I've worked really hard changing my diet, really, really hoping the scales are going to actually prove that. Still dreading the weigh-in, though. <laughs> So what are the changes that you've managed to make? The biggest one is all the variety in the foods. I've added a lot more variety, a lot more colour. Um, I've added snacks in between every meal, um, and my meals have got bigger as well. I've done really, really well. That's good. I'm proud of myself. When did you last have a cheese and ham toasty? I still eat them occasionally. <laughs> I can't Not go and do it completely, no. <laughs> one of the things I was concerned about in the feeding clinic was always putting your girls first at the expense of you, particularly when it comes to your diet. Do you think you've managed to do that? My girls will still always come first, but yeah, I do put myself a little bit more first. Good. Just not as maybe much as I should do. But do you know what? This is early days, but the changes that you've told me about are really significant. So tell me, how have things been? Well, it's, you know, you'll be really pleased to hear that I've not actually touched a single Chinese takeaway since I've left the house. Just seeing what goes into it completely put me off. It's not worth it. It's just simply not worth it. So you haven't had one? Not a single one. Now, I think one of the problems was that you were working as a Chinese takeaway delivery driver. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you've changed your job? I still do deliveries, um, but I don't do takeaway deliveries anymore. I do delivery for parcels throughout the day, so I'm keeping oh. quite active and I'm getting more chance to eat normally and having proper meals when I get home. So do you feel different in yourself? I feel like I can walk upstairs now without getting terribly out of breath. Good. And clothes are a little bit baggier and I feel genuinely a lot healthier. Excellent. Time for LJ and Katie to be reunited. You look stunning. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. How healthy do you look? My breath has been taken away. <laughs> look at you as well. What do you reckon? Yeah. You can see it in your face. Vision of beauty. <laughs> it's unreal. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you both? Okay. Pleased to see each other? Yeah. yeah. Well, Katie, let's start with you. Put some on. I think a little bit. You think a little bit? Do you think she looks different? Absolutely. You can see it in her face and on her arms as well. He's absolutely right. Because you have put on six pounds in weight. You're nearly, <laughs> you're one pound away from half a stone. <gasps> That's amazing. Well, LJ, it's your turn now. <laughs> and let me tell you, there's a very good reason why your T-shirts are a little bit more baggy. Because you have lost one stone, <gasps> three pounds. Oh, my oh God. God. You're done. <laughs> in two months. That I is mean, really good. That's no really good. That's amazing. Three inches have come off your tummy. That's amazing. <laughs> no way. You're joking. Was giving up those takeaways worth it? Absolutely. Well done, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Come here. You're so well done. I'm really, really happy. I've done it for myself. The future is hopefully a healthier and slimmer LJ. It was definitely worth all the hard work in the end. I'm totally proud of myself. I did not expect that weight gain, and I think that's an amazing achievement. Me and LJ are definitely, definitely going to stay in contact. We've got such a great relationship. It really is a friendship for life. 